What's happening guys, Cooper Carter here for G66. And on this week's Fractal Friday, I'm gonna show you how to get even more power out of an already powerful feature in Fractal Audio Systems units, scene controllers. If you follow Fractal Friday videos or you're a fairly intermediate to advanced Fractal user, you're probably familiar with scene controllers, which I've covered in several videos before. Scene controllers are one of the many controllers in the controller suite of any Fractal audio unit, and you can attach them to a given modifiable parameter in a Fractal unit and then change that parameter across the eight different scenes in any given preset. So we could attach the four scene controllers, for example, to the gain, the bass, the middle, and the treble of an amplifier block, and then dial in values for each of those knobs across the eight scenes in our preset. That way, we have eight different sounds from one different amplifier without using channels. The benefit here being that scene controllers, unlike channels, are A, 100% gapless, and B, by introducing damping into the modifier curves, we can dynamically shift between those eight different settings. Let's call this level one use of scene controllers. We've got four different scene controllers and we're controlling four different parameters across eight different scenes. Now, this may leave some users wanting for more scene controllers, maybe two more, maybe four more. And this week I saw on the forum a request on the FM9 wishlist section for just that, more scene controllers. And a user pointed out that in fact, you don't need more scene controllers to control more parameters. Let's say instead of controlling four different parameters across eight different scenes, you want to control any number of parameters, five, 10, 12. Now this is, as always, just a short video on a specific topic, but if you guys want to get the absolute most out of your Fractal Audio Systems unit, whether that's an Axe FX3, an FM9, or an FM3, make sure to visit classes.coopercarter.com for my complete Fractal Audio Masterclass series. Now, in all my years of dialing in tones for fractal artists, and really in all of my years of playing guitar and dialing in tones for myself, I think it's safe to say the most common desire that I have ever heard and felt myself is for three things, a great clean, a great rhythm, and a great lead. So let's see how the power of scene controllers can help us achieve exactly that. So we're starting off here with what I referred to a second ago as level one scene controllers. We've got four scene controllers controlling gain, bass, middle, and treble. So scene controller one is our gain, scene controller two is our bass, and three and four are our mid and treble. So four controllers, four parameters. Across three different scenes, we've got our clean. Our rhythm. And our lead. But as I mentioned, by assigning each of the scene controllers to one parameter, we're locked into four parameters. Now, of course, we could assign values across the remaining five scenes here to have, you know, clean rhythm lead, clean plus, rhythm minus, lead plus plus, et cetera, et cetera. But you're basically just changing four different settings to get eight different sounds. So let's take it to the next level. So I'm going to go into the bass here and set it to scene controller one. I'm going to set the mid to scene controller one. I'm gonna set the treble to scene controller one. I'm gonna set this depth to scene controller one. Then I'm gonna go into the ideal page and I'm gonna set the input boost, the cut, the fat switch, and the bright switch all to scene controller one. So now the gain, the bass, the middle, the treble, the depth, and these four switches are all being controlled by the same scene controller. I'm going to go into scene controllers here and set all of these to zero. And now what we have is an amplifier that is being controlled by scene controller one on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different parameters. But keep in mind that when you attach a modifier to a parameter here, in this case, we've edited a modifier and set its source to scene controller one for each of these. You have to go into this modifier page here to change either the parameter range or the start and middle 
to actually affect your sound. So right now, to get gain, we have to go into this screen. To get bass, we need to go into this screen and mid, treble, etc., etc. These parameters are now all locked. So how are we going to tweak our tone? Well, here's a little trick. Let's go into the modifier page here. And on this channel dropdown, instead of all, I'm gonna say channel A on each of these parameters. What that's gonna do is limit the scene controller to only affecting the A channel of this amplifier block. What that's gonna do is free up all of the rest of the channels for us to experiment with while we shape our tone. And then later on, it's gonna free us up to use those channels for any different number of scenes after scenes one, two, and three for any kind of sound we want. We could even change the amp entirely. But for now, let's go ahead and copy channel A to channel B. Now we have a copy of our Friedman BE V1 here. And you'll see that these modifiers are no longer locking out our knobs. So let's go ahead and dial in a clean sound. Let's say uh, we'll start maybe around 1.6, bring the bass up around four, let's say. Mid will go somewhere in the middle. Treble four, depth, we'll say, uh, we'll bring that down a little bit and probably won't need any of these, but uh, let's see how this sounds right off the bat. Let's try the uh, fat switch. And the bright switch. Oh yeah, there we go. Really nice, spanky, clean sound. Let's go and copy this channel B up to channel C and dial in a rhythm tone. So here's our clean. We want a lot more gain. Let's go up to say six. We'll bring the bass down a little bit, maybe to around two, let's say, you know, 1.5. A little less mids, let's scoop it out just a bit, say 3.7 or so. Yeah, that sounds better. Uh, let's add a little bit of treble there for some rhythm sizzle. Yep, let's bring our depth up just a bit. I'm gonna turn off this uh, fat switch and the bright switch here. Very nice. All right, so now let's copy channel C up to channel D and dial in a lead sound. <laughs> want to bring that gain way up, let's say eight, nine. I'm missing a little bit of bass there. Let's come up just a bit. Definitely missing some mids. Come up to maybe six. F. All right, that's sounding a lot better. Let's uh, go ahead and bring this depth up a little bit as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and kick on this input boost and turn on the cut and the fat. And this should really be a super shreddy lead territory. <laughs> So we now have a clean, a rhythm, and a lead tone. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to channel A, where the modifiers are locking all of our controls. 
And we're gonna go to scene controller one here. And our first scene is our clean, so we want it on zero. Our second scene is our rhythm, so we want it on 50%. And our third scene is our lead. We want that on 100%. So now, let's see what happens. When we're on scene one, everything's at zero. When we're at scene two, everything's gonna jump up to five. And when we're on lead, it's all gonna jump up to 10. Not exactly what we want. But we have our values for our three tones. So let's go into the gain modifier screen here. And since our gain knob goes from zero to 10, all we need to do to dial in our three values, our clean, our rhythm, and our lead, is dial in our values in terms of percentage. So our start or our clean is around 1.6, so we'll dial in 16%. Our rhythm is about six and a half, so we'll dial in about 65%. And our lead is around eight and a half, 8.7, so that's 87%. So now, when we go between scenes one, two, and three, our gain knob goes exactly where we want it for those three sounds. So our clean, 1.6, our rhythm, 6.5, and, and our lead, 8.5, 8.7. So now we'll just go through the rest of these knobs and do the same thing. So the bass, clean, is around 5. Rhythm is way down around 1.6, and leads about three, so 2.6, so 26%. Next up, our mid, we have for our clean about 5.9 or 59%. For our rhythm, we've got about 37%. And for our lead, we've got about 6.4 or 64%. For our treble, our clean is about half, 4.5. Our rhythm is about six. And our lead, is also about six. Our depth for our clean, we have about 1.5, so about 15%. Our rhythm is about two and a half. And our lead is about four. For our input boost, for our clean, it's off. For our rhythm, it's also off. But for our lead, we want it on. So zero, zero, 100%. For our cut, our clean is off, our rhythm is on, and our lead is on. For our fat switch, our clean is on, our rhythm is off, and our lead is on. And then for the bright switch, it's on for our clean, and it's off for our rhythm and our lead. So now, scene one accurately reflects our clean sound, scene two accurately reflects our rhythm sound, and scene three accurately reflects our lead. Now, if you wanted even more granular control over the sound of your amp block through these three scenes, you could attach scene controller one to any number of other parameters. I like to use the input EQ quite a bit when I'm shaping tone, and the frequency and the gain and the definition here are all modifier assignable as well. But let's move on. We want to get some delay and some reverb happening with these sounds. I've been using kind of just a nice standard Recording Studio C reverb here, just so that everything sounds a little bit more interesting while I'm dialing in the tones. But let's go ahead and get this reverb dialed in for each of our three sounds, our clean, our rhythm, and our lead. What I'm gonna do is pick the maximum amount of reverb that I want on any of those three tones. So let's say about 25%. Pretty swimmy. And uh, that's really nice for a clean type tone or maybe a lead. So let's go ahead and assign scene controller one to our input gain here. Now our input gain is the level of the signal that's being sent into the reverb itself. So when it's on zero, there's no reverb at all, even though our mix is at 25%. So what the input gain is doing is allowing us to send signal into the reverb so that it's processed and it plays out of the reverb, so to speak. But then when we stop sending signal, when the input gain comes down to zero, it doesn't cut off what the reverb is actually doing, like it would if we assigned a value of zero to the mix. We are still allowing the tails of the reverb, so to speak, to carry out. Let's go ahead and do the same for our delay. We're gonna select a maximum amount of delay. Let's go up to our lead scene, let's say. And what is the most delay we're gonna want on that scene? <laughs> That's quite a bit of delay. So let's say 30% is probably the maximum we're gonna want. I'm gonna go ahead and attach scene controller one to the input gain of the delay as well. 
So on my clean, I do want some delay. So let's go ahead and set the start maybe to, let's say around 50% and see how that sounds. Yeah, that's nice. I'm gonna go ahead and go into our reverb and let's say 75% uh, on the clean. Maybe a little bit more. Let's go with 80, perhaps. All right. So now for our rhythm, let's see how much delay I want on that. I can already tell you it's going to be zero. I don't want any delay on the rhythm, and I probably want very little reverb. So let's say maybe 25%. <laughs> And so now on to our lead, and by default, the lead end parameter here is set to 100%. I think 100% is about what I want on both the delay and the reverb. Very nice. So we have our clean, our rhythm, and our lead, and the amplifier, the delay, and the reverb are all being shifted between those three scenes. Now, of course, there's no reason why we couldn't add effects to these scenes like with any other scene. So for our clean, let's go ahead and kick on a little bit of chorus. Our rhythm is probably fine without any additional effects, but let's see what happens to our lead here if we kick on a little 808 drive. And again, we could add damping here if we wanted to slowly ramp between our clean and our rhythm, for example. And since we've set each of these modifiers to only affect channel A, we could also go up to, let's say, scene four and dial in a completely different amplifier entirely on channel B. This could be metal. And since this is really a rhythm tone as well, for the fourth scene here, we can set it to 50%, which will assign the rhythm scene values for the delay and the reverb to this metal scene. If this video was helpful for you guys, I hope it was, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to G66's channel and leave me a comment in the comment section below letting me know what you'd like to see on a future Fractal Friday. And as always, if you guys want to get the absolute most out of your Fractal Audio Systems unit, whether that's the Axefx 3, the FM9, or the FM3, make sure to visit classes.coopercarter.com for my complete Fractal Audio Masterclass series. For all things Fractal Audio, keep it right here on G66. We do have some very cool tone tours coming up in the next couple of weeks, and I will see you guys next week on Fractal Friday.